Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter, and I'm here today to go through sort of a walkthrough of how the wire bugs work. Uh, some tips and advice from my time with an early access version of the demo, which you're seeing footage from, and also give you a full tour of the Ancient Ruins map. So this is going to be a pretty long video. I'm going to focus all of my uh, effort on the wire bugs earlier on. And then if you want to stick around and see a tour of the entire map, uh, then please stick ahead. And I'm also going to be showing all the different endemic life that we can find in the map as well. So when going into the demo, I do actually recommend uh, that you get used to the wire bugs first because it is quite different. Um, it felt a little awkward at first, uh, but in no time, I'd say about 30 minutes, uh, I was doing really good. Uh, so instead of going into these two hunts, uh, choose the basic training quest, do it once through. It does cover some basics that veterans of the series will be well aware of, um, but it is a quest in which no large monsters appear and you do have like a 45 minute timer. So this is what I've been using to sort of explore the map and to get used to the wire bugs. So let's go ahead and choose this. It doesn't matter which weapon you choose. I'm just gonna pick something that in case I accidentally draw it, I can put it away fast. So I'll just choose something like the sword and shield. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, you know what? I really like the armor. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the light bow gun. <laughs> so the first thing I thought when my impressions of the wire bugs, when I first got my hands on this demo was, just how fast everything seems to go by. You would think by watching the demo and people who are used to playing it uh, that everything is quite slow and you've got enough time to react. But basically, um, the ZL button is your wire bug button. And you're going to get used to that. And it's going to get wired in your head that whether your weapon is out or not, ZL is going to be your button. So you can press X to do a vertical jump. And it just jumps. If you notice, it's over really fast or you can press the A button to go straight forward. Very cool, I just love how fluid it is. Um, it doesn't quite feel like a jump button, uh, at least at first, but once you get used to it, it really does. So another thing you might notice is when you hold down ZL, uh, you also have this target. So in case you want to actually aim where you're going, which is gonna be really important while we're climbing up structures, you can go ahead and move the camera using the right analog stick, aim and hit ZR and that will shoot it in the direction that you're going. Now, in case you didn't notice, with the camera up like that, it goes by really fast. So if you want to do anything in the air, you're going to have to get really used to that timing window. If you accidentally uh, face this way and you're doing this and you hit X to do the vertical, if you notice, you will not go towards where the target reticle is. You go towards where your hunter is. That was a little counterintuitive for me at first because when you hold down uh, ZL, I'm going to have a hard time saying that, um, you do get that reticle no matter what. Um, so it's hard to uh, keep in mind that that only really comes into play when you hit ZR. Now, the most important thing that you can learn for the wire bugs is to press A when you're in the air. This can happen when you jump off into the air or when you're doing a wire bug. So let's go ahead and jump on top of this hut. So what you want to do is just aim slightly above it, hit ZR, and we're on top. Now, if I jump off and then I hit the A button, you'll see what happens. You can go ahead and swing on a wire bug. And as long as you have momentum, you'll stay in the air. And then when you run out, you'll drop down. Now, the cool thing about that free suspend is that it doesn't cost any wire bugs at all. So at any time during the game, you can do it. So your basic movement pattern is going to be wire bug, swing, wire bug, swing. First off, when you swing, you can jump off in any direction you want using the B button. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I want to jump backwards, I can do that, which I think is really cool. We jump forward if we want. And you can even do another wire bug from there. So let's go ahead and get up here. This is such a great place to practice, really. So I'm going to go ahead and press X to go in the air, and then I'm going to press A to suspend. If you notice, I'm in the air. If I jump off, I can do another wire bug and another A to suspend. It's super fun. So the basic means of transportation is going to be that sort of rhythm. So let's go ahead and see that again. You can see how you can get around. So let's say I want to zip ahead to the other side of this tent. What I would do is go up, suspend, up, up. If you notice when you jump off, it's so fast that you can't always do a second wire bug, but that's okay. Okay, so in the back here, we have a great wire bug. So we're gonna use that to jump up to this cliff here. Woo! If you notice when you hold uh, ZL, anything that is scalable, 
um, you'll notice that you'll get this sort of target red coal on it. So it's really good. It's a nice way to note that this is a wall that you could run up of. But if you try to run up it, you'll notice nothing happens. That's because in order to do a wall run, you have to wire bug into it. Go ahead and pick that sucker up. So if you notice here, we can't go up it. But if I do, let's say, a um, wire bug right here, I'll start to run up it. Now you can't actually run up the exact same distance for too long. Your hunter will occasionally jump off the cliff, whether you run out of stamina or you're going up in the same direction too much. In those cases, using that A button to jump back on is very good. I'll show you what that looks like. See how they jump off? And you can go ahead and use your other wire bug and then shoot right back on the wall and you can climb up it. Likewise, if you, I did notice that if you try to run up uh, by a, like an angle or a distance, uh, you can get up it without uh, having to jump off. Just don't go all in the same direction because sometimes the game might think that you want to jump off. So once up here, you've noticed this is a really cool feature that I hope is not part of just the demo, but in the full game as well. But mining out craps and anything else, um, when you can gather multiple times, it does it all in one shot. So watch this. That's cool. I think the effects of the sort of the text popping in look a little rough. They'll probably need to smooth that out for the final game, but I do love the function of being able to do it all at once. So let's go ahead and practice again. If you notice, we could just jump off this, hit the A button when we're in the air. We can use that. We can use wire bugs. One thing to notice though, is when you are suspending the air, your wire bug gauges do not restore. The gauges actually do stop. So keep that in mind. And that's all there is to it. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. I think once you get your hands on the demo, it takes about, I'd say 15 to 30 minutes to really get used to it. Um, especially if you're um, using the ZR here. Um, if you actually aim it downward, you're not gonna have time to do that suspension in the air. You, you could try and it's tough. Uh, see, I couldn't even do it there. So I do recommend getting used to the ZR and the X. Just going up at an angle is just really nice. Okay, let's take a tour of the map, shall we? So let's go ahead and go up here. See what's going on. I do love the idea that there's no loading zones anymore. I think it works great with exploration and the game runs really good. I've been, I will admit, I'm really used to 60 frames per second because I've been playing a lot of my Xbox Series X lately. Uh, so it took my eyes a good 30 minutes to adjust. At first it felt a little janky um, but then I realized this is just, you know, what happens when you go from 60 to 30 FPS. At first, it, it feels weird. Uh, but your eyes do adjust and it becomes quite smooth afterwards. So let's see if there's anything over here. Ah, we got a hidden area. I wonder how many people are going to find this. There's probably going to be some other hidden areas that I don't find uh, in this demo. This is a nice little shortcut. These things are interesting. Uh, you get these uh, points and you get this uh, thunder bugs as well. Uh, so I could jump down there. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's jump down and scale this map from uh, going clockwise from the bottom uh, left all the way over around to circle. And then we'll check out all the areas in between. One thing to note here is that although you can slide in this game, there are no sliding attacks, it seems. So if you jump off, you try to attack, you can do like a jump, um, but there's no actual sliding attacks like there were in World. Also, whenever you're in an area that's kind of dark, you get this automatic light that pops up. I thought that was a nice touch as well. So let's go ahead and do some exploration, shall we? That's a nice big jump. Just looking out for some endemic life here. We do have a Gajau. Uh, if you remember, these are the guys that uh, were surrounding Jurotodus in Monster Hunter World. So if we want to, uh, we can go ahead and pick on him if we want. <laughs> there we go, the Gajau. Very nice. I love the water effects. I don't know whether this is just helping them with uh, the computation of monster skin on the ground. It might, um, but whatever it is, like it looks fantastic and it works really well. You got the Vigor Wasp on our back, which is nice.
These are areas where monsters will leave and come back. Uh, so they're kind of exclusive entry zones for the monsters. You'll get used to those. And then we have all these sort of temporary use bugs as well. So these will only persist for a small period of time, but all these different wildlife give you effects. So here's the peeper sex. So we'll reduce my stamina by a little bit, which is nice. If you notice, I want to get on top of that waterfall. So you could climb it the hard way. So let's do that first. So let's go up here. <laughs> Ran out of wire bugs. They go by so fast. I swear the wire bugs are like, they're like really delicious chips and you just keep popping them and then you realize that like your bag is empty, you've ran out. So we see this is a scalable distance. So let's go up here. There we go. So that's the hard way. Or we can do the easy way. Usually when you have a really big cliff like this, there's usually a shortcut that you can use. Go ahead and jump up here. Uh -huh, you're here. Here it is. And these little things here. So you're going to get used to where these are located. Uh, these are little warp spots for your wire bug. Let's go ahead and hit that. Shoo! Up the hill. Come up across a new endemic life here, the Anti Dobra. So let's go ahead and pick that sucker up. So this will use to cure and prevent poison, which is really nice. Uh, at any time you can see your helper cage, you are able to carry up to five at a time. And they are selectable like items. So you can go here and you can select it and use it. And it's an antidote, which is very nice. And then for a period of time, you'll notice this little rainbow icon next to my hunter name at the top. Uh, that will ensure that I do not get poisoned. So cool things to pick up before you go into a hunt if you know where they're located. We got some little bugs up there. I wonder if we go get those. There we go. We've got another one. So this is an area I want to show last. This is sort of like the peak area where you can really look over the entirety of the map. So go ahead and we'll do that last. We do have uh, the return of Gargoyle, which is really nice to see. Pick up some dung. So let's go ahead and shoot one of these suckers. See what it drops. Ooh, we got a golden egg. That's nice. So we can run this back to camp and get a nice payday. You can use a wire bug uh, with items, which is really nice. And you can run. You can roll as well. But if you wire bug off of a large area like this waterfall, it will fall and break. And you don't want to do that. I'm not going to go deliver this. So let's go ahead and just uh, place this down. <laughs> Pick up a third wire bug for the heck of it. And we're just going to scope out the area so you can see all the different stuff. I really like the design of this map, though. It's, it feels like a forest map, but it's open enough. Uh, and it's got enough water and vegetation to really make it feel almost like a mountain map as well. No berries, some bigger wasps. If you notice at the map here, we're at the edge. So for all the edges, they use really tall cliffs that you can't scale up. So if you hit ZR, you'll see you can't get up these. I'm sure there's some hidden areas um, that I'm just not aware of. It's also a good opportunity to show you the new and improved fishing system, which I was quite happy to see. So you get ahead and press the A button, it goes into fishing mode. You can now really choose where you want the sort of lure to go. So let's say I want it there. Wait for him to bite. Pull him in. Yeah, what did I get? A wet fish. <laughs> and then it goes back. And this is a free camera, so you can really aim for what you want. So I really like this. I wonder what kind of rare fish might be in this demo. I just don't have the time right now to really test. That's a big boy. So you got to ask yourself, how did I just put that away? <laughs> Into my pocket, right? Suspension of reality, I like to call it. If you notice, the icon for the anti-poison from that snake is still active. These things stay active for quite some time, so the endemic life is certainly worthwhile to pick up. Here we have some wyvern eggs, if you want to pick those up. Uh, no, we can't pick it up here, but 
Looks like the remnants of one. You want to do the Gargoyle Lottery one more time? See what we get. Another golden one. Wow. I'm lucky. Golden ones are usually not that easy to get. See, if you notice, it, it only uh, poops it out when it's startled. Uh, that's sort of classic for these monsters. So if you notice here, we're, we're not at the end of the map. We do have some scalable stuff. So let's go ahead and scale up this. Again, moving at an angle uh, seems to work best. Otherwise, your hunter may jump off and you might need to jump back up onto the cliff. So we get some Spiry Birds. These are the things that boost your attack power, your stamina, and your health. So we're going to pick up a bunch of these as we go along. I'm not going to get all of them, but it is possible to get max. I did that a few times already. Go ahead and get some Trap Bugs. These are interesting. So insects with sharp horns. Monsters tramples them will flee temporarily. So... I've not actually been able to use these on a monster yet, so I am going to in one of my other videos. This one's just about exploration, but if you want to see what this looks like, you use it and it springs this trap. Um, maybe they hit it and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm out of here, and they flee uh, is probably how they work. So maybe it works like a dung bomb, but it does damage the monster, perhaps. Be interesting to find out. Make sure we're at the end of this map. Okay, so we're at the sort of edge of where we can go and what we can do. Um, and we look at this area to see if it's scalable. It is. So let's go ahead and scale up it. All right. Is this scalable? It is. So let's keep it going. All right. So these areas with these little brushes, uh, you have to attack in order to get it to clear away. That's one way of doing it. <laughs> now with the Swordmaster weapon you can just swing your blade and it'll open up. And usually they have uh, hidden uh, Spearer Birds or other fun stuff like that. Let's go up here. Ooh, see my hunter almost jumped off. <laughs> okay, we get a really good look at this area down here. Uh, we've got the little... Uh, slippery Falls, we've got some Gargwas, and we've got that sort of Pagoda in the back. So let's go ahead and scale. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything up there. Uh, so let's scale this mountain going across, shall we? Go ahead and jump. Just do a few of these just so I can show you what's hidden, so you can see these guys. Get some unique items here, these fire lanterns. Okay, so now we got this downwards area. I may as well show you this area because I did say this was going to be a tour, right? So we got a whole group of spare birds here and we have a poison toad. Now, unlike Monster Hunter World where you'd kick these things and they would activate their effect sort of on the spot, you can actually pick these guys up. Uh, and then when you go and you want to use them, you just place them on the ground and they do their thing. Which I really like. Want to get poisoned? Let's go ahead and get poisoned. See what that effect looks like. We have another wire bug warp, which we'll use uh, in a second. It's a nice area over here with some ferns and some bones. Yeah, so if you notice, this whole thing is scalable. Uh, I could show you how to scale up it uh, if you want to using stamina. So what we'll do is we'll run up it until our hunter jumps into the air. So it's a ran out of stamina. So just hold the A button here, regain some stamina, come back and quickly shoot back on the wall. Uh, and you can continue running up it. Go ahead and regain some stamina. We got one more wire bug. This reminds me of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild. There we go. And we got up it. Uh, what do we have over there? So in this one case, we don't even have to use a wire bug. I could just jump off, hit A, and then use the jump from that. So let's do that. So show you what that looks like. So you see here, you can move around quite a bit just because of that A button attack. Uh, not attack, but evasion. I really like that move. Okay, so let's go back. Oops. 
That's okay. We'll use the uh, the jewel lilies. So we have a jewel lily down here we can use. One more, and we're up. So that's pretty cool. Let's grab another wire bug. And I'm going to jump down here and show you what that other one did. I put my weapon away. Okay. So there was another lily over here. This will probably bring me up to those mountains. Up to the cliffs. There we go. Whoa. So that flung me all the way over to this area, which is a lot farther than I wanted to go. So let's go back. And let's continue up these cliffs, shall we? We notice they do have some hidden stuff over there, showing you where to go. Let's get it. All right. Okay. What's in here? We got another defense up. Stamina up. Sort of pagoda area. Okay, let's continue on to the upper left of this map, shall we? seeds. One thing I do like is if you hold the minus button, it will bring up a detailed map and you can do stuff like change category. Uh, so we can go to perma buffers and this shows us all the different birds that are around the map that we can get. We have the other endemic life. So these are all the temporary ones that we can pick up. We've got gathering spots and there is a lot of them. And we have the icon list selection. So I really like this. This is a good map. Shows us where everything is. You can't lock onto it uh, like you can in Monster Hunter World, uh, but the maps are quite smaller compared to World, so I think that's okay. Okay, now that we're at the top, I'm going to make this go a little bit faster. Uh, otherwise, this can be like an hour-long video as I run across all the different sections here. So you can see this back alley that goes across here, um, and you can also surface these rocks. What do we got down here? So here we have a brew wear. Brew hair. Sorry about that. Um, it says they can be used to, effect, to improve and amplify the effects of some items. This just seems to sit inside your helper cage. You can't use it. Um, but keeping it in here, I'm assuming that it enhances the effect of other stuff that's inside your cage. Um, but we'll have to wait until we get some more clarification on that. Okay, so up here we can see this whole downward area. This is where they had the demo with Acnosum uh, and the Greatsword that they were fighting it over in this top area here. They got some bullfangos, the mean things, and they do fall asleep uh, and do have a little cycle, so they feel like little living creatures, which is nice. I'll show you the name of this uh, dragonfly here. This will raise your affinity for a short period of time. The Cutterfly. You can see the icon now for affinity in the top there. Just give you an idea what affinity looks like when you hit it. Whoops. You see that red effect? That's the positive affinity. There it is again. There it is. So I'm not sure how much it raises your affinity because unfortunately, at least in the uh, early access footage I have, um, the equipment info is not available. I assume that's going to be the case for the actual demo as well, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Lots of endemic life around here uh, for when you're fighting monsters. Do have flash flies as well in this game, so if you want to blind a monster, you can do that. Okay, let's move this along. 
So a lot of this stuff is just really cool areas um, that you can climb up and across and find different endemic life. Uh, but what I really want to do is show you that uh, inside part uh, where we can really scale it up and see the beauty of this map. Yeah, so this is the Rathian nest. So here we can actually pick up a wyvern egg and bring that all the way back to camp. I assume it's just going to give us some points. Uh, to answer the question, can you kill Kelby in this game? I'll show you what that looks like. And the answer is no. They just get KO'd. In case you didn't know, in the older games, this was a thing in the English versions. Uh, but in the Japanese versions, the Kelby could be killed and carved. Uh, but for some reason, not uh, the English ones. It's annoying suckers. What's this? Twisted remains. Mmm. Yummy. You see here, there's just so many mining outcrops. So, I mean, I'm going to have a lot of fun when this game comes out. Uh, just going across and doing collection runs for items. So you might recognize this. They've been showing this area off quite a bit uh, in their demos. So this is the area with the uh, building structures down below. Nothing really new to show off here. Uh, this is... Of course, a dangerous area, you can fight monsters down here. They will go through the gate and you'll have some cool fights. The bullfangos here could be quite annoying, uh, so I don't actually prefer to fight in this area. Well, you know, if I don't have to. Let's kill this sucker. Dush. Carve him. <laughs> this poor thunder beetle here. Just trying to push the, the the poop. Go ahead and pick that up. <laughs> You're here. So let me go ahead and go up to a safe area. Then I want to show you something pretty neat. So this is a safe area up here. So let's go ahead and zip. So this is another area you've seen from a lot of their demos with the Escugo. Cute little snail. So let's go ahead and use him so you can see what that looks like. <laughs> Get my healing mist. Uh, we do have the thunder beetle here. You notice you just peg him. Uh, so a lot of these beetles are used as projectile items, sort of like a ninja. So you have fire beetles you can throw, and it does like a fireball. You've got blast beetles. Beetles, you'll throw it, and it does a blast. Thunder does like it's like an elemental bomb that you throw at a monster. It's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and use this warp to get out of here. So this is just a big safe area that you can go in uh, to buff up, uh, reheal yourself, and then when you're ready, you can just jump back over the wall and get back into it with the large monsters. So this leads us up to a very nice uh, way to get to this middle section. I'm sure there's a ton of different ways to get here, uh, but this is just one of them. This is my favorite part of the demo, actually, is uh, the exploration and just getting used to using the wire bugs. There's so many different hidden paths. You notice this whole, whole area, monsters can't come here. This is all just for exploration. So the fact that they uh, consider exploration important enough to make entire sections dedicated to it is pretty cool. So we do have some mushrooms. We got this bird here. This can be used to, to call out uh, large monsters. I can't even use it here because uh, large monsters I don't think can appear here, so I can't use it. I can use this guy, open up my oh, slots. So we get this nice little shrine path. Um, you can go down these things, there's lots of different collection points, whether it's ores or bones and stuff like that. I'm just going to show you one, and then we're going to scale up this mountain. Yeah, this is another way up the mountain, so to say. Is this uh entrance here so let's head on up it's quite intuitive actually on how to get up you could just climb it uh if you notice all these things are scalable so if you want you could just go just run up and just sort of brute force it <laughs> which i imagine most people will do again whoa yeah, it's it's a little tough uh, your stamina runs out a lot faster than you might think. 
Especially when you haven't eaten a steak like myself. Can I get up here or not? Ah, uh, nope. I'm stuck. <laughs> that was a bad move. Let's go ahead and eat a steak before we do this. Okay. So I'm just going to run up this thing like a normal person. But just so you know, you can run up it really fast if you want. I got some hidden mining outcrops. So where we're heading is where that five is. Uh, that's the sort of the viewpoint. They said there is one point in every map in which you can sort of look down across everything. And that's where it is for this one. Running up. You notice we have a lot of birds and a lot of other cool stuff around this area that you can collect. Uh, actually, I wonder what's on that little pagoda. Let's go over there. So we're going to go ahead and ZR, A, and then jump. Is it just another wire bug? Yeah, it's just another wire bug. Let's continue up the mountain path, shall we? <laughs> You're here. Can I scale this? Yeah, I think you know. I think I'm just gonna scale this. It'll go a lot faster. Pew. There we go. And it brings up to this area. Now this area is not actually uh, grayed out, so I'm kind of curious if you can fight a monster up here. I imagine it's possible that a monster will come in here to sleep, and this is like an arena that you can fight it in, because it is, again, not grayed out, uh, and does seem like it's uh, designed as a good arena. Woo! Barely made that up. We're almost there. So we try to get up here as well. There we go. Anyway, now at the vantage point, and unfortunately it's the evening, so you can't see everything uh, too beautifully. So we get this nice little nest area. Just sort of overlook this entire map. One cool thing is that uh, when you're up here, everything is showing. The draw distance is amazing. Uh, I went up here during a hunt. And I was able to see uh, Arzuros like all the way back there. Um, it's definitely not being skimpy on the draw distance, which I thought was incredibly impressive, especially because the Switch is a device that can fit literally in your pocket. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? So yeah, this is the nice vantage point here. So I think that's almost done for the demo. So let's go ahead and jump down in style, shall we? <laughs> and we're already back here. Uh, one thing I do want to show you for exploration wise is that there are armor spheres that you can find. And even those are tied to endemic life, which I thought was really neat. So we got this structure up here. So I'm going to run and get up the, uh, up that element. So let's try doing two of them. There we go. And on top of here is this little thing called a boulder lizard. Cute little thing. You kick it. <laughs> and it drops either earth crystal or it can drop a armor sphere, which I found a few of these guys uh, throughout this level, which I thought was pretty cute. But anyways, I hope that gives you guys a good idea. Uh, the wire bugs, again, do take a little bit of getting used to, but I think once you are used to them uh, by doing like a gathering quest like this, I think you'll find it much easier to use them in battle as well because... Uh, they can be used offensively, not just defensively. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry it was a long, a little unstructured, but hopefully it gives you a good idea of what to expect when it comes to exploration and using the wire bugs in Monster Hunter Rise. Hope you guys look forward to my other videos, which I go through all the different weapons. Hope you guys have the ability to download and try the demo. Uh, but if not, it is coming out March 26. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, happy hunting.